Hi everyone. Today we will be talking on the topic the uh, dental oral manifestations in diabetes mellitus. Now, diabetes mellitus is a very common systemic disorder uh, attributed to the lifestyle, to uh, the food uh, that one consumes, to the um, environment that one is surrounded in, the genetic component of it. All in all, uh, this systemic disorder seems to be prevalent worldwide and it is a fast becoming one of the primary causes of mortality and morbidity. Associated with this systemic condition are a multitude of other disorders which manifest as a result of uh, this disease. From a dentist perspective or from your oral health perspective, there are a few common diseases that one encounters uh, when uh, suffering from this systemic disorder. Uh, the first one and the most common one is periodontal disease, uh, characterized by inflammation of the uh, gums or the gingiva, uh, associated with uh, alveolar crestal bone loss, uh, which in turn results in um, mobility of the teeth, uh, drifting of the teeth, uh, loss of uh, uh, the loss of uh, integrity of the surrounding gingiva of on the tooth structure and eventually resulting in tooth loss. Now, the pathogenesis associated with periodontal disease pertaining to diabetes is the accumulation of AGE or advanced glycosylation end products in the periodontal tissues, resulting in decreased periodontal regenerative capacity and defective immune regulation. Now, the treatment and prevention is a chronic or a very systematic follow-up of the patient once diagnosed, at least at every six months, um, uh, correlating the uh, disease progression, that is the diabetes mellitus progression. And also, if a presence of periodontitis is there, then the um, required treatment should also be meted out. Uh, periodic reviews, uh, as said earlier, dietary advice as in um, a more conducive uh, diet with uh, less sticky food, more of a, and um, uh, non-consumption of uh, beverages, sugary, uh, uh, sugary uh, sodas, etc. And periodontal therapy, at least um, a periodontal checkup followed by treatment, including uh, scaling, root planing, or even uh, flap therapy as required but definitely a follow-up at every six months period. The next common thing in case of a chronic diabetic uh, patient is dry mouth, uh, caused due to, again, uh, the accumulation of advanced glycosylation end products within the parenchyma of the salivary glands. It results in atrophy of the parenchyma, which in turn results in reduced salivary flow. Uh, and uh, the reduced salivary flow has also been attributed to a result of polyuria and dehydration in the case of an uncontrolled diabetic uh, patient as well. So how to control the dry mouth, uh, a proper control of the diabetes and early catching of the disease and the required treatment so it doesn't progress beyond a particular level and also a maintenance of dental hygiene. Uh, the next uh, thing that one encounters is root caries. Uh, because of the lack of sufficient gingival uh, protection around the uh, cervical margins of the tooth, the loss of uh, gingival and periodontal support and the exposure of the root uh, to the oral uh, area, the accumulation of uh, plaque and calculus on the uh, root surfaces result in root caries added to the fact that there is a decreased uh, salivary flow, so the cleansing action of the saliva is reduced. The uh, pH of the saliva is altered because of the lack of appropriate function of the salivary glands, uh, all conducive to the formation of root caries. Uh, prevention would be use of fluoridated toothpastes, uh, restorative treatments at the uh, visualization of incipient caries itself and optimal glycemic control can prevent the progression, the contributing factors to progression of the disease. 
In case of uh, uncontrolled diabetics, the older age individuals, uh, one can encounter oral candidiasis. Again, attributed to the uh, dry mouth or the decreased salivary flow uh, due to the alteration of the oral microflora and fauna and uh, the uh, hyperglycemia that the individual suffers from and also due to the impaired immune system uh, from the lack of glycemic control, uh, one can encounter oral candidiasis characterized by erythematous or white pseudomembranous uh, areas on the oral mucosa. It is not associated with any pain per se, unless in the case of erythematous candidiasis, a mild burning sensation may be associated with the atrophy. Uh, the treatment uh, mainly com composes of antifungal topical uh, medications like nestatin or meconazole, around uh, five times daily for at least a period of seven to 14 days until the resolution of the disease and also an appropriate glycemic control and uh, consumption of a very immune advancing diet. Uh, the next thing one can encounter is pulp necrosis and periodontal abscesses, uh, most commonly seen in, again, in case of uncontrolled diabetics or undiagnosed diabetics as well. This is often the first indicator they have uh, the presence or the appearance of multiple periodontal abscesses, again, uh, caused due to ischemic uh, tissue damage uh, due to uh, reduced blood supply to the gingival and the periodontal tissues, again, because of the accumulation of glycemic end products or glycation products within the uh, cells of the body and within the cells of the uh, vascular structure. Uh, the management is endodontic treatment and once again, the control of diabetes. Another thing and the most common thing one encounters is delayed wound healing and increased incidence of infections following surgery. Uh, the delayed wound healing again attributed to the increased amount of glycation end products, which uh, uh, prevents the production of new cells, which help in maintaining the immunity of an individual. Uh, thus, thereby slowing all the metabolic processes. And also in the absence of immunity, uh, the oral microflora uh, flora itself or microbiome itself can cause uh, infection in the individual. Uh, this is once again attributed to the vascular dysfunction uh, that one encounters as a secondary damage because of long-term diabetes or uncontrolled diabetes. Prevention is uh, always having an antibiotic prophylaxis uh, before uh, starting with uh, before starting with an invasive procedure in a patient. Invasive procedure meaning it can range from a periodontal therapy to um, uh, to an extraction, even if it is a simple extraction and not an infection, or even an endodontic therapy. Always do it under end antibiotic coverage both aerobic and anaerobic antibiotic coverage should be there ideally. And of course, a good glycemic control. So this uh, concludes uh, the most common pathologies related to diabetes mellitus, which one encounters from a dentist's perspective in a dental practice. Uh, the discussed uh, matter was the pathogenesis associated with it and also what one visualizes as oral manifestations and also the treatment and prevention. Thank you.